It'll be okay. That's okay. Turn it up. A little bit more, yeah. Hello. I don't have my head on. Yeah. Yeah, mine's in the truth. All right. Um, so yeah, I was saying, um, Catalina Nieto, I work for an organization uh, called Witness for Peace. Um, the organization was actually founded in uh, 1983 as um, uh, faith-based activists uh, founded Witness for Peace in response to the U.S. funding of uh, the Contras in Nicaragua. And um, Witness for Peace activists contributed greatly to the efforts to cut off uh, U.S. Uh, military aid to the Contras and, and resist uh, Reagan's war on Central America. Uh, since 2000, uh, Witness for Peace has also been in Colombia uh, looking at the impact and documenting the, the impact uh, of uh, Plan Colombia, which is the multi-billion dollar military and counter-narcotic uh, funding package uh, for the Colombian Armed Forces. And uh, in Mexico, we've been since 1991. Uh, first, we were doing accompanying work uh, to um, Guatemala and refugees going back to, to Guatemala. But then also after 1994, after the North American Free Trade Agreement went into effect, also looking at the impact of, uh, of the trade agreement on the ground on communities in Mexico. And um, we have a team in Mexico who's now, I mean, on the ground really following what's happening with the drug war. Um, and um, you know, going along with partners and, and really understanding kind of like what's happening on the ground, but then uh, also looking at what what's the role of the U.S. in all of these. Um, so a big part of the work that we do is actually take delegations from the United States to these different countries: Nicaragua, Honduras, Mexico, Cuba, uh, Colombia. Um, to look at the impacts of the economic, uh, corporate policies, military policies on the ground. Uh, we also bring speakers uh, to the U.S. Um, also, you know, to, to explore more some of these issues. Uh, but I think, I mean, the, the, the core of our work is really policy change and change here in the U.S., knowing that, you know, like, we play, or the U.S. plays such a big role in, you know, creating this violence and poverty in other countries. Then, what's what's our role? What's our 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 main effort should be, you know, definitely focused on, on changing these policies, corporate, military, economic policies. Um, so, uh, so I mean, I was invited here to talk about the drug war, and obviously, like, come from coming from from witness for peace, our main question is, well, you know, what's, what's the role of the United States in the drug war? Um, and um, obviously, I mean, it's clear, and we see it every day in the news, that uh, there's a problem in Mexico in terms of violence, in terms of drug trafficking, uh, in narco-trafficking. And um, we've also heard that there is a collaboration between the United States and Mexico in tackling uh, this problem. Um, I think that the one first thing that's important to understand is that this so-called collaboration didn't necessarily start with President Calderon going to President Bush asking for help. Um, there's been very high level dialogues going on for a long time. Uh, one of the most recent uh, actually has been happening since 2005 under uh, the Security and Prosperity Partnership. It's been a series of dialogues and summits uh, where the heads of uh, the United States, Mexican and, Ca and, uh, and Canada have been uh, meeting and you know, holding these dialogues also with uh, corporate leaders of uh, these three different countries um, to, to discuss kind of like the, the trade agenda and also the security agenda of the three countries. Um, it's important to understand also that men, that these dialogues have been happening without a congressional oversight or public input in, in these dialogues. So, um, and the mission of uh, the Security and Prosperity Partnership is to increase continental economic integration and coordinate security systems. 
So many people call it the NAFTA plus agenda. So the North American Free Trade Agreement kind of like looking at that side of economic integration and now then expanding it to also that security integration or security strategy integration. Um, but I mean, mainly it's really asking Mexico to take the priorities of the US in terms of security, counter nar narcotics, um, counter terrorism, border security, and obviously, I mean, a very militarized approach uh, to all of these. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's the imposition of the US agenda on Mexico. Um, so from the SVP, the, the Security and Prosperity um, Partnership is where the Merida Initiative comes from. Um, I don't know if you've heard much about the Merida Initiative, but um, it's um, also known as Plan Mexico, and it, won it was announced in October of 2007, and it was actually signed into law uh, in 2008 by President Bush. Um, it was originally uh, a three-year plan, and it was designed to uh, combat illegal drug trafficking, coordinate law enforcement efforts, and fight organized crime in Mexico and Central America. I mean, the largest portion goes to Mexico, but uh, part of the funding goes to Central America as well. Um, and from 2008 to, 2000, uh, to 2010, uh, the US Congress has given uh, $1.3 billion to Mexico uh, on military aid, um, basically going to the Mexico's military and police force, uh, forces, and also a big portion of the money going to uh, US defense contractors for equipment, uh, training, and maintenance. Um, so even though it was a three-year program, uh, President Obama has decided to extend it um, and uh, requested uh, $310 million for 2011. And in the most recent budget request uh, under Merida for Mexico, we've seen that they're requesting uh, $282 million um, for the drug war next year. Uh, so this, I mean, just a little background, and I know it's a lot of numbers and all of that. I mean, basically, we're saying that a lot of money is going to the drug war, to this militarized approach. And um, what we're saying is, you know, like, we have a drug problem here in the U.S., so the way to cure it is to fund uh, and equip and arm foreign military and then focus on the supply side of things but not a lot of talk about you know the demand side of things but I'll talk a little bit more about that um, I mean I, I've been following this for for just a few months to be honest and um, and even in the just short three years of this initial uh, after the initiative was implemented uh, we've seen the devastating effects that it's had in Mexico. Uh, you know, the, Mexico has an official government database that's uh, tracking drug-related deaths. And uh, since 2006, uh, uh, nearly 30, uh, 35,000 people have been killed uh, in drug-related violence. Um, I mean, we've seen the Washington Post, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, uh, that have all documented numerous cases of torture, rape, harassment, and other human rights violations uh, committed by the police and uh, the military without prosecution. And these are the, the security forces that the U.S. is funding and training. Um, and even most recently, as, as I've been following these, just in January alone, I've seen so many reports. I mean, one of them, the Inter-American Dialogue, uh, rethinking U.S. drug policy, they're saying, you know, it's time to push the reset button on the drug war. Uh, the Drug Policy Alliance, it's also saying stop wasting money on the failed uh, war on drugs. Um, even former Mexican President Vicente Fox was recently quoted in a Times article saying that uh, violence leads to more violence, prohibition isn't working,